I'll start by saying, okay, I'm having technical hitch to move to the next slide. Malik. Kwambo kindly assist uh, Masi. Kwambo is also our IT guy. Yes, IT, okay. Kwambo. Hello, sir. Masi, just go back to the main presentation, as in, Yes. Go back to the slides themselves. Don't don't edit anything. Just go back to the folder with the slides. Okay, fine. Yes. Share. I'm not That's able better. to move. That's better. <clears throat> no, you can just press on the second slide if you need to. Yes. Just okay. Move. Yeah. Just okay. make it a bit smaller yeah thank you there okay you fine there there i go so i would say that uh my introduction i would say that the best food choices may not make a champion out of a rugby player with no talent but in an in that inadequate that can certainly prevent a talented player from reaching optimal training and performance level meaning that nutrition is very important and we are going to see how nutrition is important Sports nutrition is the application of both the knowledge and the practical eating plan. It is also designing. We look at the designing and the planning of nutrition schedule, taking into consideration the account and the uniqueness of demands of each player. I would say that it is focused on providing the fuel for physical activity and also to for a rugby player to be able to perform competitively and also promote overall well-being and uh, health and well-being, wellness. So sports nutrition, its main uh, important, uh, the, the importance of it is to prevent premature fatigue. And this is the biggest limitation when it comes to sports and exercising. Sports nutrition is meant to give an individualized player regimes, training regimes, which is tailored to that specific person. It looks also at the aspects of nutrition in terms of what do I, should I eat, at what time, how much should I eat for effectively uh, be able to fuel, refuel and recover and repair from a competitive or after a training. Also sports nutrition looks at the nutritional needs for an individual because it, it depends also with the frequency, the duration that a player has, uh, has been on uh, the training or at the competition, the level and the type of the activity and expected goals of the individual. So the more the expectation from your body or the more the greater the needs than a uh, player needs. So sports nutrition also, it's meant to preserve and build muscles. It meant to improve recovery after strenuous exercise. It meant to prevent early fatigue and potential injuries. It means important also is to maintain healthy bones of which it's very important for a rugby player. Needs to maximize oxygen, transport use, and also repair the existing cells and create new tissue. It meant to optimize the fluid and the electrolyte balance and also provide energy and overall health for performance. So if you look at this diagram, it shows the goals of the sports nutrition for optimal performance. That is our main goal for a player, for, for, for us to win. So we need that nutrition for that optimal performance. We need nutrition so that after a training or a competition, for fast recovery and also mental clarity. And also the main thing being a, a rugby, being a, um, a, a competition or a discipline that there are a lot of injuries. So our main aim of sports nutrition is to prevent injuries. So nutrition in general plays a vital role throughout training as well as before, during and after matches. We'll see how that is. The diet needs to be structured and periodized uh, uh, to support uh, the physical demands of our training and matches. 
Also, it needs to provide appropriate amounts of necessary nutrients so that an athlete, a player, is able to meet the nutritional demands of the rugby uh, playing. So matches, rugby matches, have repetitive, short, high intense bursts of running and tackling, suddenly directional changes and high impact of condition. This dramatically um, puts a lot of uh, needs, nutritional needs to an individual. So whether they're in season or over the training week, athletes need to ensure that their eating is adjusted to meet their training loads. So it is important that athletes eat strategically year round, including during off seasons to maintain their goals. So if you look at that diagram again, it shows uh, the type of nutrients that we have. We have the macronutrients and the micronutrients. In the, ma the macronutrients form the bulk of the food that we eat. It, it contains a carbohydrate which is around 65 to 80% of our, of, our, of our diet. The fat gives us that 10 to 30% of our diet, and the proteins also look like 7 to 15 grams. So if you look at the micronutrients, those are the vitamins, the, uh, the, the minerals. They are required in smaller quantities, but it plays a very important role in our lives. So if you look at the next diagram, we are saying that micronutrients, they are needed at 0.005% of your body weight. Those are the vitamins and the trace elements. But the macronutrients, then even they are more than 0.005% of your body. The micronutrient is less, the micronutrients are more. So what should a rugby player eat? If you look at that plate, we call it choose my plate. It contains all the macro and the micronutrients. It contains the fruits, the vegetables, which are the micronutrients. It contains the grains, the proteins, the dairies, which are the macronutrients, which we need them in, in, in larger quantities. So for an athlete, for a rugby player, the important thing first, each athlete needs to take is a carbohydrate which is a macronutrient. It is important nutrient needed uh, in an athlete's diet. It is vital for peak performance during physical activity. It provides the energy for the brains and the body to function proper, properly. It needed to digest and broken, uh, to digest and broad, uh, to break down glucose, which are stored in, either in the liver in form of glycogen, glycogen or muscles to be used for fuel, especially during physical activity. So carbohydrates generally improves the athletic's performance, improves the rugby player's performance by delaying uh, fatigue. It doesn't prevent fatigue, but it delays fatigue to compete so that an athlete will compete at high level or for longer period. So it helps also for muscle gain in repairing and rebuilding muscle tissues, which maximizes the muscle gain. So if you look at the carbohydrates, what are the importance of carbohydrates? They are the preferred major sources of energy. They are broken down rapidly so that it releases blood sugar slowly. So it, it's important in the maximum exercise. And carbohydrates also, they are, they, they are used for muscle, the, to power the muscle contraction of which it is very necessary when an, uh, a rugby player is running. It's also important for pro providing fuel for the brain. It aids in fat metabolism. For every, um, we say that fat burns in carbohydrates, meaning that carbohydrates, uh, fat cannot uh, be used alone without a carbohydrate. So it is very important. Also, carbohydrates also, they have a protein sparing effect, meaning that if you eat carbo protein alone, the body, the body needs fuel fast, and fuels come from carbohydrates. The body will, prof will, 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 will catabolize, or it will break down the proteins to provide energy 
before 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 you being used as a protein so it is important for us to take carbohydrate first even for our muscles to uh, contractions it is the protein carbohydrate that we need so there are three uh, main types of carbohydrates we have we call them simple carbohydrates which are sugars this occur in, it occurs naturally in foods like fruits, vegetables, the milk, and it contains mostly of the, food, uh, the, 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 uh, the carbohydrates. And it is in fructose, the sucrose or the lactose, that is lactose is in milk, fructose mostly in the sugar, and sucrose mostly in the table of sugar also. So starches, they're also in complex carbohydrates. And that is why a rugby player, they need complex carbohydrates meaning it is made of many sugars you need bonds, but the important thing is that it, it stays in the system for a very long time because they are being absorbed slowly. So it is very important for us to take complex carbohydrates. Instead of going for white bread, you can go for a whole meal bread. Instead of going for white bread, you can eat things like, um, you can eat things like um, uh, sweet potatoes, and I don't know whether you are seeing one of it here. This is a sweet potato. It's a big one. So we can also think of eating a sweet potato instead of going for things like also chips or the, the, the simple carbohydrates. Also of importance are the fibers, which are complex carbohydrates. They occur naturally in most of the fruits and vegetables, the whole grains, and also in cooked dry beans. So our important, our focus here is to have a diet quality by choosing nutrients, rich whole foods to prevent or of illnesses and injury. So what are the practical um, uh, tips that we can ensure that we have enough vitamins and minerals? So instead of, um, we need to enjoy variety of fruits and vegetables. Don't every day be eating cabbage, 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 cabbage. Today we can eat uh, spinach, tomorrow you can go for fruits, vegetables like skuma wikis, and next day you can do the traditional vegetables for variety. Also, aim at, we, when I say five to nine portions, I'll show you which, what, what I mean by portion of a fruit or a vegetable. You need also to go for fresh produce. We are blessed in this country. We don't need tinned foods. We don't need frozen foods. We can go for fresh foods, especially those in the season. Uh, things like fruits, instead of buying um, apples every day, instead of buying uh, bananas every day, because they are all season, you can go for a, an orange. You can use an apple. I don't know whether you're seeing my apple here. You can go for a mango. There are a variety of fruits that we can take for better. This is a passion. You can go for a passion. You can eat our bananas. They are very good in potassium. So we can take variety of foods. We can go for an orange. So as many as we can, let's take variety of these fruits and also vegetables because not one, one, one fruit or vegetable not give you variety of nutrients. So we need variety of them. So can we, also we need to limit storage time of foods. Don't buy uh, green vegetables today and leave it in an open place without even um, blanching them. Blanching means uh, you need to cut them and, 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 and dip it in hot water, just dipping in hot water to preserve the nutrients, but not boiling. So we need to preserve our vegetables correctly so that we have uh, enough nutrients. Also, we need to avoid overcooking of vegetables. Some people cut vegetables, then they wash. You should, we should do the other way around. We need to wash, then you cut them. But not in small pieces, but in a larger piece, a junk, a junk, not, not small, small pieces. Because the smaller pieces, you meaning you're exposing that vegetable and you have and, and vegetable, it's, we call it a fat soluble vitamin. And it needs some fat, when a bit of fat of oils when you are frying them. So, and again, it, 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 um, the nutrients is lost during heat. So when you cut them into smaller pieces, the more nutrients we, you, are, you are losing. So it is important to cut them into a bigger jack 
so that, uh, so that you, our nutrients are preserved. Also, we need to limit the amount of water used. Please don't put water in the vegetables. It needs to be steamed, it needs to be fried, but for a very shorter time, and you need to preserve the green, the green, the green color. So kindly also do not use bicarbonate soda in your vegetables because this um, it will it will uh, dilute the nutrients. Also, make sure also that sometimes you can also use fortified cereals, which is important in the market. So when I say five to four portions, five to four portions, I mean five to, to nine, uh, five to nine, nine portions of uh, fruits. If you look at that, that slide, one small uh, measurement of one small fruit, a medium like an apple, a banana or an orange that I've shown you, it means that you need five to, five to nine, which, which means you need one of these, another one here, that is a mango, a, a veget, uh, you need also, um, this is, this is a uh, citrus fruit, uh, a, an orange. You need also probably a passion to make the fourth one and a banana. So to make the fifth and the sixth one. So you need to take five to nine fruits in a day for you to get one portion of, to, to, to get enough of your vitamins and the, yes, enough of their vitamins. So the next slide, if you look at the portions, I said one ounce. One ounce is like one, one 30 grams. And 30 grams, or when I say we need like half a cup, three cup, or half quarter a cup, this is the measurement that I'm showing you. If you look at an ounce, it's less than two ounces. And also 250, a 250 ml is a standard cup that we need to be using. So when you're told, take this measurement, that's why now you need to sit with a nutritionist to do your plan of your meals so that when the nutritionist tells you you need like 2,000 or 3,000 calories, how will that nutritionist arrive at that? Will arrive by using all these exchange lists and using the portions that I'm showing you. So how do we as a, master, uh, as a rugby player, how do we increase our muscle mass or muscle weight? Most players have a desire to increase their muscle mass and their strength. And we need a well-designed resistance training program together with a well-planned diet. That's why now your coaches are coming for your training program and also nutritionists should come in to plan your diet for you to get the, 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 the increased muscles. Also, when we need to increase our muscle or our weights, we need to do a real realistic expectation. Some people gain like two to three kgs per week, but they actually need 0 0.25 to half kg in a week. Meaning in a month, you do like two kgs. Because in two weeks time, that is one kg. In another two weeks time, another kg. So meaning that you need to, 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 to increase like two kgs. So for higher weight, it is likely to increase the body fat stores that may have been have to be reduced later in stages. So we need to increase our weight in a very small, manageable portion. I mean, proportion that uh, you, you don't gain the fat, but you able to build our muscles. As resistance training influences protein metabolism for up to eight forty eight hours, following training, continue eating high protein and also energy meals throughout the week, and not only on the training days. I mean, training uh, days, yes. So you need to program yourself so that you take your proteins and also your energy at the, at the amount that is needed. So the most important dietary component of your weight gain program is an increase in total energy. That is the carbohydrates. You need to increase like 500 ml uh, kilocalorie per day. When I say kilocalorie, remember that one gram of uh, carbohydrate has four calories. So you need to sit with your nutritionist so that you say this, you need 500 more calories, they will, yeah, they will be able to, to calculate for you. So what are the tips? We are saying we you need to increase your meals, especially the snacks throughout the day. You need to plan ahead to ensure that good options are available so that you don't uh, rush through 
so that you don't go for a quick fix, you need to make sure that energy dense drink are available, like the smoothies. You can do fruit juice, you can do smoothies. Sometimes people do me uh, liquid meal replacement, the bars, the dried fruits or soft drinks. You need a whole grain food with high lower carbohydrate alternatives and ensuring that all drinks contribute to energy. So you need to replace your diet drinks and large volumes of water with sports drink, juices, or low fat drinks. So how are we going to increase our protein intake? Generally, these needs are met through increasing your total energy. Unless the player has limited access to protein rich foods, we need variety. The white meats are the best, the fish, the chicken, but also you can take other alternatives. There are dairy products that you can use, there are legumes that you can use, especially those people who are um, uh, vegetarians. Sometimes vegetarians, it's very hard for them to meet their nutritional, I mean, protein requirements, but we can work out uh, something in terms of what else do they need. Also, we need time. Our protein intake is very, timing of our protein intake is very important. For a rugby player, before going, if you have four hours before going to, 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 to for your training session, you need to take a protein. You can take, we'll see what you, uh, type of uh, uh, proteins that you can take. You can take an egg, you can take a, 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 a whole bread uh, with butter, uh, peanut butter for your proteins. You can use the nuts, which are very important. So protein needs to be consumed together with carbohydrate rich uh, uh, recovery snacks after training enhances anabolic processes. Anabolic processes means it enhances your growth and mineralization of the bones to increase your muscle mass. So example includes, you can take a low fat fruit uh, yogurt, smoothies. A smoothie, you can make it out of um, like banana. You can use banana, you can use an orange or even a mango. Then you can put mala if you are able to, you can use yogurt to enrich your protein. Um, also, what about our protein? What is the role of the protein in the body? Its role is for tissue maintenance, for the tissue repair, for the tissue growth, for energy source, that is to a lesser degree. Because I said, what an athlete need most is the carbohydrates. For us to use protein for energy, it, you are giving your body task to catabolize, to break down the protein to energy. So. Our main aim is to make sure that we are getting enough protein for our tissue and re uh, repair and the growth. Remember also we are growing old. We are not like uh, 20 years. Some of us, we are 40 years. Others are 30s, others are they are in 20s. So you are not like an eight year old. No, you are not like you are a, a 16 year old. Your demands, your body, it has to repair itself. It has to grow for maintenance and for also for lesser injuries. So we need to take protein in the amount that is needed. So what are your reasonable goals to decrease fat mass? Fat mass, when you need to re reduce your weight, what is the reasonable goal or way to do it? When we said um, you need to increase 0 0.25, the same thing also, you need to reduce 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, kg per week of body fat. Kindly don't, if you note know that uh, you gained a lot of weight and you are going probably to compete, you don't need to do that drastic weight loss. It will affect your performance. It can even lead to injuries. So the best way is to, to, to have goals. The best way is for you to plan yourself. How am I at this point and how am I at the time of my competition in terms of weight? Also, you may need to manipulate training programs. That's why you have strength and conditioning um, uh, coaches to help you in that. So the approach needs is to be holistic. Players need to lose weight fat. To bo body fat may require behavior modification and psychological support. And this is where also we have um, 
a psychologist coming to, 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 to help us in the terms of our psychological support. But in terms of eating, you need to have uh, behavior change. Behavior change comes out of your making sure that you need to meet your goals. So when training volume decreases over holiday periods or if the player is injured, the total energy it needs to be reduced to avoid fat mass. Especially right now, I know team sports right now, we are not uh, training as a whole. That is, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is what it is. Right now, you need to decrease your, 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 your intake, your food intake, and we'll see how you're going to do that. Uh, next, we are going, how do we improve our recovery? The goals of recovery nutrition are to replenish muscle and liver glycogen store. When I say liver glycogen store, what do I mean? When our bodies, when we eat food, there is an amount that the body can take up. Anything extra, it will be stored in, in the liver or in the muscles in terms of glycogen. So when our bodies have diminished or when we are fatigue is, uh, diminished the energy, what normally happens? The body is able to convert the glycogen in the liver back to, they are broken down to uh, glucose for energy. So uh, for our improved recovery also, we need to replace the fluids and the electrolytes lost in sweat. So also we need to re regenerate and repair the damaged tissues. So examples of our post-exercise recovery snack, uh, around 50 grams of carbohydrate, 10 to 20 grams of high quality protein. You need a smoothie, I had talked over milkshake. You need something like yogurt, a 250 ml low fat yogurt or 350 ml of drinking yogurt. You need also 200 ml uh, yogurt, which is low fat, but plus also an energy bar or a sandwich with low cheese. A sandwich, you can make it out of bread. We can put our, our cottage cheese. You can use lean meat, you can use chicken, you can use eggs, and also a fruit for you to make a, a more high quality protein uh, sandwich. You can also use a bowl of cereals with low fat or fat-free milk, or even two small uh, packets of buns, that is around 250 ml of yogurt. So what is our nutrition when we are off season? I know COVID-19 is here with us. We are at home. There's a period that we will, uh, will not train. So what has been, how have you been taking your meals? How have you been um, expending your energy? So when the expenditure is less, you need, and that your intense training and matches are on hold, so you need also to take less of your feed, foods. In terms of the carbohydrates that you are taking, when you are in season, the amount of carbohydrates, you can take like two to, uh, two to three grams per kg body weight, but when you are off season, you can go to a normal person. My normal person is in, you are the person who is not a rugby player, somebody who is not training, which can be amounting like 1.2 to 1 point, it starts from 0.8, to 1.2 grams per kg per day. But the important thing at this time, this is the time now you need to build more muscles. This is the time when you need to lose more weight by diversifying your eating foods, which you need to take healthy foods. You need to take less of the energy, as I have said, the less calories, and also reduce the amount of the snacking and trimming down the size of your main meals so that you lose on your weight and not because you are not training. Also, takeaways, foods are high in fat and calories, so control your takeaways. When you are off season, you have more time to, to plan your meals. You have more time to cook healthy meals. You have, you have more time also to visit the market so that you, you buy your foods. So um, what are our goals in increasing muscle mass? For uh, increasing our muscle weight, you need to talk take small frequent feeds, that is more often. If you are not able to take one large meal, like for breakfast, to lunch, then dinner, you can take small but more frequent feeds. You can also eat, um, you can take snacks 
which are healthy during breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime, you can increase the nutrition value of your foods. Like if you're eating bread, whole bread, you can add peanut butter, you can use honey, you can use jam, so that, or even toast your bread, or use yogurt for in smoothies, and also add skimmed milk. That one, I've talked about it very elaborately. So also you can make sure that you are well swelled up before doing any exercises. Carbohydrates are the key that we have learned today that carbohydrates are the key in your diet. Also, you remember to refuel after exercises. Keep more tasting snacks in your kit bag when you're going for your trainings. You need to take plenty of fluids, like including milk, juices, milkshakes, and, 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 and also um, health, health snacks. So what is the goal of trimming the body fat? You need to reduce portions of the meal sizes as well as snacks when you are off season. We need to only eat till you are full. Don't, don't overeat. You need to keep fat intake low. Be, be sparingly with uh, butter, margarine, oils, cooking the fats, the fried foods. Please go slow on them. You need to be, be careful of hidden fats in processed foods, like biscuits, the cakes, the donuts, all of them contain process, they contain hidden fats. So you need to go slow for them. You need also to increase the amount of vegetables and the salad in your meals. You need to uh, cut out particular food or food groups. You don't need to cut out. You only need to, to, regular, to take your regular intake of carbohydrates and proteins and also drink plenty of water during the day so that you keep uh, sweet drinks to a minimum. So what is our match nutrition? Players need to focus on nutrition on both the day of the match as well as the week before the match. This is now when you are going back. Because you've been off season, when you, are going to, when you want to go back to the match, you need to focus on what you are eating. You need to adhere to eating plants. During the training week, we'll ensure that adequate carbohydrates stores during the game. In the last like 23 to 24 hours, you need to increase carbohydrates and low fat intake. And also you need to plan ahead and prepare for all situations so that when you are traveling or staying in hotels, which might be a test of discipline sometimes, especially now when you are at, um, for, uh, the team is going for preparation, they're in a hotel, sometimes it can be, uh, it can be, it can test or it can, um, I test you to uh, probably you need to take more of which is not supposed to be. So what are the practical tips? Players should never try anything new during a match day. All dietary strategies should have been well rehearsed, meaning that before you go for a match, you need not to try something new that you are not used to. Eat the foods that you are used to. You need to use this opportunity to restore your liver glycogen stores and also to hydrate. Choosing foods and drinks that do not cause any stomach upsets or discomfort uh, will be important of this time. So if a player experiences reactive hypoglycemia, that hypoglycemia means the lost blood sugar or abdominal discomfort during a match, they should have a longer time between the last snack and the match time. So meaning you don't eat, if you have discomfort before a match, you need to stay for a longer time before eating anything. But in between breaks, if you're feeling okay, you can be taking a, a snack, a healthy snack, something which will not also cause more discomfort, but you need to balance everything. So uh, what are the examples of the pre-match uh, meals? You need to take something like porridge with low fat milk. You can eat pancakes, a toast with jam uh, or low fat cheese. You need to take boiled eggs and toast with jam. For a rugby player, before a match, kindly eat a protein, eat a carbohydrate, four hours before, before a match. So for lunches, you can take spaghetti, you can take chicken, just a normal meal that you are used to. Don't try something new at that particular time. So for pre-match, 
one hour before kickoff, what do we need to eat? One hour, that is one hour. So you need something that is easily digested. Sandwiches with low fat cheese, ham, chicken, boiled egg. You can use pancakes, you can use smoothies, you can use sports bar uh, and, and cereals or even sports to drink. And we'll see the, during that you have energy levels at par for you to be able to, 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 to meet your uh, competition requirements. So during the match, when our main important is to prevent dehydration. And at every opportunity, you quench a thirst. In between stoppages, injury time or half time, please quench thirst. Take water. You need to replace familiarize with the fluid requirements in different environmental conditions. If the environment is there's a lot of heat and humid, it means we need more water. The requirements for water will be more. So you need also to incorporate carbohydrates into the fluids so that it delays onset of fatigue. Also for maintainers of skills and concentration. The effects of consuming fluids and carbohydrates are addictive. So a variety of options exist for carbohydrate intake. However, sports drinks offer a convenient strategy for meeting fluids and carbohydrate needs simultaneously. But some athletes, and some, uh, it depends also with the individual. Some people might not, um, might not tolerate their sports drink because of the concentration of sugar. If you look at the next slide, the sugar content of sports drink, if you look at something like Powerade, it, for 20 hours, that is 591 ml, it contains 34 grams of uh, sugar. One tablespoon has 10 grams of sugar. So it means it has around three, almost four gram, uh, four, 40 tablespoons of sugar. So I don't know, for individual needs, as, as an athlete, you need also to listen to your body. You need to know what fits me because there's no one fit diet for all athletes, for all rugby players. So it depends with the individual. Take one thing and don't try new things as we have said. So another thing also, shop practical tips. You need to plan your meals for the week ahead. Time and use also the strategy of shopping lists so that you shop things which has including more variety of carbohydrate, whole meal, healthy. The best choices are having low fat or fat free products, carbohydrates, carbo uh, proteins with less than 10 grams of fat, carbohydrate with less than five grams of fat, also snacks that provide less than six grams of fat and also fresh fruits and vegetables. So what is our vitamin intake? We need to enjoy eating a good variety of fruits and vegetables. I said vitamins and minerals and micronutrients. We need less than 0 0.005 grams of our body weight. So we need variety. We need five to nine fruits. I'll let me not repeat there because we have talked about it. So the lipids, lipids are the fats and the oils. We have unsaturated fats, insaturated fats. Unsaturated fats, they are liquid at room temperature, mainly from plant sources. They are the best. They help reduce uh, the cholesterol level. And the examples like olive oil. And also we have two types of unsaturated fats. We call it monounsaturated, which helps also in controlling the blood sugar and also control, uh, con um, reducing the high cholesterol level. And also we have the polyunsaturated fats, which is essential to regulate the body functions, such as the covering the nerves, building the cell membrane, blood clotting, inflammation, and muscle movement. As an athlete, Inflammation is the is 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 the we need to ensure that we don't have any inflammatory conditions as an athlete. For the saturated fats, this mainly the red meat. They are found in the red meat. They are solid at room temperature. They are from mainly the uh, animal sources. They are not the best. They are not the best. 
But if you look at these diagrams here, these are the best. This is what we should be using. So what are the tips to reduce the fats? We need to do snacking of health, uh, fat-free or less fats, like the avocados, they are uh, unsaturated fats. We say all plant pro uh, proteins, all, sorry, all plant sources are called unsaturated fats and they are the best. So you can use avocado in your bread, you can use nuts, you can use seeds. I don't know how many of us are eating uh, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds, they are very nice. They are very rich in zinc. So in instead of preparing your pumpkin and throwing the seeds, kindly fry, wash those, wash those seeds and fry them. When you fry them, they are very crunchy and they are very good source of protein and also zinc. We need also to vary our cooking methods. Kindly let's vary, let's sometimes boil, let's bake, then stir fry, not every time frying, 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 or deep, or deep frying. So we need to vary our cooking methods. We have said about unsaturated, let me not repeat that, because we said unsaturated are processed meats. We need to also vary your diet with skinless chicken. I don't know how many of us are removing chicken when we are eating, but it is the sweetest part. But please, for us to reduce our fat, especially when you are reducing your weight, kindly, eat skinless chicken. You can use your eggs, your fish, and also for the vegetarian sources. We have two types of vegetarians. We have also a lacto-vegetarian. A lacto-vegetarian is a person who is able to take either milk or eggs, but with no meats, and also vegetable protein. That is the plant proteins. We need also to add carbohydrates, and that one, I mean, uh, avocado to our sandwiches. I have talked about that for the satiety because it's satisfying. And also the important thing for every athlete to, is to eat in moderation. The amount of energy you expend in terms of energy out, that is now you, are, you need to take equivalent, equivalent amount of calories if you are body uh, weight is okay. But when you are off season, because of less expenditure of uh, energy, you need to take less carbohydrate, less, less meals. So injury, this unfortunate bit that we cannot miss to talk in um, rugby. We are seeing that nutrition during this time is absolutely critical to promote speedy recovery. Nutritional consideration will vary depending on the type of the injury as well as the individual situation in terms of individual nutritional status. So the more the leaner, the more you the bigger, the lesser the, the carbohydrates, the lesser the protein, the lesser the intake of the meals that you're taking. So practical tips, you need to reduce the risk of injury when taking training or um, playing a match. You need to take adequate carbohydrates. Most athletes think that for us to, for me to, um, to, to, to have less injuries, the main thing is protein. Protein we need it's for repair and building, but also we need that carbohydrate. For your heart to beat, you need carbohydrate. For you to think, you need carbohydrate. For you to tackle the, your, your person, yes, in your teammate, for you to, because um, rugby, uh, is, 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 uh, is, is a competition that you need. There's a lot of tackling, there's a lot of uh, high intensity bursts, there are a lot of running. So you need carbohydrate for that energy. And also for you to avoid fatigue during training or playing a match. So the important thing, when you want to reduce injury, please adequate carbohydrate and also um, more carbohydrates. Also you can use it in terms of sports drink. Also, immediately after training or the match, you have recovery snack, drink to replenish your muscle energy stores. This is less than an hour. You need to take something, and especially a protein and an energy for also your glycogen stores that we are saying glycogen, they are stored in the liver and the muscles. So you need to replenish. And by replenishing immediately after 
after after a, a match or a training, you need to take something. Some athletes or rugby players, it is not uh, sometimes not practical for something somebody to eat something immediately because of their nature. They don't feel like eating because they feel nauseated. Please take something like a sports drink, like some things like a sports bar that it can give you energy. So again, we need to avoid alcohol as much as we can, especially because you need to, no alcohol should be consumed 24 to 48 hours as it delays recovery by causing extra swelling and also bleeding, probably your heart injury. So if you go take your alcohol, we'll see the effects of alcohol. I don't want to preempt at this moment. So to reduce unwanted fat mass gain or prevent loss of muscle mass when injured, energy in should not exceed the energy out. Energy expenditure should not, should not, ex, should not um, energy in, in terms of energy, what you are taking in should not exceed what you are taking out. So you need to balance. You need to cut back on your total food intake in terms of calories and also uh, especially when you are uh, when you are not training. You need to avoid eating out of boredom and resorting to high fat, uh, comfort, food such as crisps, chocolates, and cakes. Remember also watching TV while eating can make one overeat. So once you are going to eat, make it, make it a habit. Let's, let's enjoy your eating. When you enjoy your eating, you will eat, uh, you, will, you will not tend to overeat. So please, don't eat when you're bored. So you need also to focus on the nutritious food. And we have seen what are those nutritious food. Also include good sources of protein, calcium, iron, vitamin C, which is essential for uh, promoting healing. So how do we generally promote our healing and recovery? So we need to take adequate intake of vitamin C and E. We call them antioxidants. Because why we call them antioxidants? They help the healing processes. They help us uh, take more oxygen. Our vitamin C, example of the vitamin C are the citrus fruits, the oranges that I've shown you. So we need to take also sufficient, sufficient dietary iron, like the iron lean meats, the organ meats, the liver, so that our oxygen take up will be high. So we need more dietary uh, iron. If there's a short-term antioxidant supplement or immune booster supplement is required, this should be under prescription. We'll talk about nutritional supplementation, but under prescription. Head, neck, and jaw injuries. This can make your eating difficult, but uh, special meal replacements and special foods may be needed. And also the consistency of the food can be made. Like instead of eating um, a whole uh, potato, they can mash the potato so that your consistency is, 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 is liquid form or pureed, we call it pureed. So if your mobility is limited or when an athlete is on uh, crutches or plaster, so we need to make sure that energy in, should not um, exceed what you are expending by balancing your meals. I think that one is well elaborate. So let's talk about fluids and hydration. We are saying that approximately 70% of your, our body or weight is water. So we lose water through the skin, the sweat and the lungs. So how, what is the best way for us to, uh, to hydrate? Before beginning a training, you, your body should be at normal state of water content. In terms, we call it your hydration. You need to prevent excessive hypohydration. That is loss of large volume of body fluids during exercise. You need also to replace losses following exercise prior to the next exercise bout. Meaning that between games, you need to replace what you have lost in terms of sweat, in terms of um, even spitting saliva. So it is very important. Fluids also needs to be individualized because of the mode, personal mode sweat rate, exercise mode, exercise intensity, 
and also environmental conditions and exercise duration. So what are our fluid needs? These negative effects include fatigue, poor decision making, and also reduced concentration. When the fluid and electrolyte needs vary between athletes, depending on their sweat losses, we have said also sports drink provide players with an opportunity to replace the fluid because they contain electrolytes, but not all athletes are able to take a sports drink because it has the concentration of sugar is high. For some athletes, they will enjoy it, so it is good. So other beverages such as milk or salt foods plus water are just effective in rehydrating athletes. Our body sweat rate is differs. And we see some, some athletes, <clears throat> we have athletes that we call uh, salt sweaters. They, they sweat a lot to an extent that they, they, they turn white. So what is the, what can we do to such athletes? They need to take something with salt. Sodium, it's very important. Let's look at this diagram. <clears throat> Those are the dehydration harms that an athlete can get. We have physiological function that is in exercising performance, which can be premature fatigue. It can increase the body temperature. It can increase exertion or also at risk of injury. In cognitive, in terms of memory, an athlete can have poor memory as a result of dehydration, poor attention, and also DNA damage. This has been research and you can see that dehydration can, in, uh, can damage your DNA. Also there's physiological, uh, physiological uh, changes that is increases the heart rate and also decreasing reaction time. A rugby player should be very alert in terms of um, when tackling, when looking at when we're being tackled, the direction changes. So an athlete needs, a rugby player needs to have the reaction time should also be very super or at par. So what are electrolytes? All of us, we need electrolytes for survival. They interact in our tissues, the nerves and the muscles. We need a balance of different electrolytes, which is vital for healthy function. Electrolytes are needed for normal functioning of the body. Our sources of electrolytes, fruits and vegetables. Mainly, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, the chloride. So like for potassium, a banana, it's a very good source of potassium. Actually, it has the highest source of potassium. So it is important for us to take fruits and vegetables. So when we have electrolyte imbalances, an athlete can feel weak, they could be twitching, seizures, and heart rhythm disturbances. It can actually cause arrhythmia. So electrolytes and, 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 and exercise, electrolytes are minerals like sodium, I have said, potassium and chloride. The most concentrated electrolytes that are lost in sweat are sodium and chloride and potassium. To an extent, some potassium. So these electrolytes are called, uh, closely uh, regulated by the body across the cells to maintain the many functions of the body. It helps with hydration that improves performance. It also facilitates the absorption of water. This allows fluids to cross the intestinal wall into the bloodstream to be carried to the tissues. So if electrolytes are very important also in the regulation of the heartbeat. Look at that. I don't know. It is, I would advise all of us when we are going to do a short call. I'm a medical person. Yeah. When you are urinating, kindly check out your urine color. If your urine color is from amber down, it means you are dehydrated. Look at ruby brow, mid brow, orange brow, copper brow. It means this person is the water, the amount of water they are taking is less than what their body needs. So we need our urine to be from like number five to one. Pale yellow, the best. Straw, golden yellow, 
golden orange, pale amber, start thinking about taking more water. So what are the effects of alcohol? Does alcohol affect our performance, our rugby performance? Yes, it does. How does it do? For our muscle development, it impairs its growth in uh, for, the, for the muscles, which can easily cause an injury, which diminishes the protein synthesis that is a result, also decreasing the muscle growth. Alcohol dehydrates the body. And we have seen the harms of, 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 of dehydration. It slows your reaction. It, 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 um, your memory, it affects your memory. Alcohol is a powerful diuretic. Diuretic means it increases your urination, your urine production. And when you are dehydrated, what are the results? We have seen like risk of cramps, muscle pulls, muscle strains. Alcohol also prevents muscle recovery. It how does it affect by causing effects, uh, sleep patterns? It drops you of your sleep patterns. And also for your body, chemical, there's a chemical called human growth hormone, which plays an integral role in building and repairing muscles. So when you are deprived of sleep, it decreases in lean body mass, and muscle recovery, which can impair your performance. Alcohol also depletes energy. It disrupts the water balance in your body. It hamper ability to produce adenose triphosphate, which is essential fuel for our old cells. So what are the results when it is diminished? A reduction in your body, ATP, that is the adenosine triphosphate, resulting in lack of energy and loss of endurance. So what happens when an athlete and a rugby player is not able to endure in terms when they are running, they have less um, energy, the results will not be okay. Because by the end of it, what is in our minds is to see that when you are competing, we need to have uh, uh, medals. We need to uh, make sure that uh, we win. Our goal is to win. So the important thing is uh, avoiding alcohol. Alcohol also impairs the functioning part of your brain, which is vital for formation of uh, memories. We have said how memory can affect uh, performance. So the effects of alcohol on nutrition, we are saying that alcohol contains empty calories. Alcohol calories are not converted to glycogen. It is, it is a form of stored carbohydrates. You, you remember when I said energy, when the body has used its fuel, it stores it in liver and muscles. So when you take alcohol, it's not able to convert that to glycogen. Consequently, it's not a good source of energy. So the body converts the energy from alcohol into fatty acids and stores as a fat tissue. A result, alcohol consumption increases the fat storage and can adversely affect the percentage of body fat. So what am I saying here? Sometimes we have conditions called fatty liver. Fatty liver can be as a result of taking alcohol, especially if you are taking alcohol before taking a meal. So the effects of exercising with, with hangover also. I'm imagining even a rugby player Today we were in training, today we are in a match, and tomorrow we have a, probably a final, probably qualified to go up to finals. And today you, 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 you decide to celebrate early. What, in, what are the effects tomorrow when you, are, when you are competing? So it can cause, alcohol can cause toxicity, dehydration, the toxic effect causing fermentation, nausea, uh, soreness, depression, and headache decreases your aerobic performance capacity but as, as much as 11 percent your oxygen uptake might not be at par so does alcohol affect your performance yes it does it inhibits your nutrient absorption alcohol in uh, devoid of vitamins and minerals so it keeps your body from absorbing these nutrients from other sources if you look at vitamin b1 
It plays role in metabolizing food, or fuel energy, as well as formation of blood, hemoglobin is blood, which is essential for optimal performance. For a rugby player to run, you need oxygen. The oxygen uptake, your lungs should be, I mean, your oxygen uptake should be at par. So if you are you take an alcohol, it devoids, it prevents you from having that. Also, it helps maintain healthy red blood cells. Uh, it inhibits you uh, from maintaining healthy red blood cells and nerve cells, which are chronic uh, excess alcohol consumption may contribute to B12 deficiency symptom, which manifests in anemia. Anemia, we, call, we have something called sports anemia. Sports anemia is when an athlete is not able to take more, the, the HB, the hemoglobin level are low to produce uh, iron to produce more blood. So what are we saying here? The folate and the folic acid is part of the coenzyme involved in the formation of the new blood cells. So a deficiency that folic acid can reduce and reduce uh, VO2 mass, the oxygen uptake, which can negatively affect uh, endurance. Also zinc plays an important role in the process of energy metabolism. So when alcohol depletes you of the zinc sources, which can reduce your endurance. So in summary, alcohol reduces muscle force production. It decreases your muscle strength and power capabilities. It alters the transport, activation, utilization, and storage of most nutrients. It also causes dehydration that we have seen in, 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 in um, which impairs uh, performance. It alters your protein and carbohydrate metabolism, increasing your metabolic rate and oxygen consumption. It impairs uh, recovery from injury and micro tissue damage associated with training. It impairs the functioning of the central nerve system, coordination and precision. So our interests, we talk of supplements, nutritional supplements. We are seeing that Anything which is not a macronutrient, it's not a micronutrient, and not consumed in food form are classified by Food Federation of Drug Administration as a dietary supplement. So nutrition supplement, it is a name, it can be in a terms of vitamins, minerals, herbs, amino acid. It can be also, um, in terms of uh, botanicals, dietary substances for use. An IOC definition says it's a product other than tobacco, which is used in conjunction with a healthy diet and contains either vitamin, mineral, herb, or amino acid. It's a dietary substance for use by man to supplement the diet by increasing the total energy intake or a concentrate, metabolize, a constitute, an extract or a combination of these ingredients. So what are the prevalence of supplements use? Most athletes, it's at 82.2% widely, worldwide, worldwide. And protein supplement being the most predominant at 54.5%. This was a research which, which has been done. So coaches were identified as the primary source of information regarding supplementation. This doesn't mean that they encourage supplementation, but they tell you that please don't use those supplements. Also, motivation. What was the, um, there was this question which was posed. What is the mot motivating factor for you to use nutritional supplement? Most athletes, like 35.4%, say they want to enhance their performance. So the majority of the athletes, 72.1%, were aware of associated health risk. This is a journal of International Society Sports Nutrition, which was done recently in 20, 2019. So what are the supplements use? Supplements use varies across different sports and activities. It increases with the level of training and performance, increases with age that you are, the more you use, 
is higher in men than in women. It's strongly influenced by perceived culture norm that both sporting and non-sporting people. So what is the truth behind nutritional supplementation? Food and Drug Association can only ban a supplement. It is fine proof that this supplement is dangerous. So there's something called buyer beware. That not all supplements approval does not mean it is safe or effective. There's evidence that 20% there are evidence of potential harm. Consumer report in 2010 found that countless instances of supplements contaminated with heavy metals, pesticides, imagine pesticides, prescription drugs being to unsuspecting customers. Also, the unlisted additives in supplements are not, um, they are not, they have not been, uh, that, that have resulted in a variety of at least failing drug test and losing eligibility to compete. Remember the issue of doping. The Food and Drug Association itself freely admits that many supplement ingredients and effects remain unknown as only 0.3 have been studied closely enough to determine their common side effects. So most supplement fail to produce results. So many supplements are marketed as proprietary blends, proprietary blends, meaning it's avoiding, it's listing specific amounts of ingredients as a strategy to underdose their products with specific nutrients and replace actual ingredients with useless or cheap uh, ingredients. So supplement companies often employ deceptive marketing. They can use an elite they are paid to endorse that supplement. But in actual sense, that athlete has never taken that uh, product, nutritional supplements, of which most of them sometimes even admit privately in person that they have not used this product. So other companies actually hire scientists to conduct studies on their supplements, but also control the release of the fundings. So supplement response dependent more of a good thing is always better but threshold for effectiveness and some common contains threshold of toxicity people believe that the more it is in terms of dosage in terms of the amount that they are taking the better but have you look at the medical part of it the toxicity part of it so example incorrectly Using an iron supplement can result in vomiting, nausea, which some athletes abdominal pain, irritability, drowsiness. I would imagine if I was to compete tomorrow and today I take my overdose of whatever supplement I'm taking. Then I get, start getting abdominal pains, irritability. Will my, prod, my, my, competi my competitiveness, my performance will be good or will be a I think that when you know the answer. So what are the intended or the claim effects or benefits of supplements? People believe that they correct or prevent nutrient deficiencies that may impair health or performance. This one is true if blood sample has been done and you have found that you are deficient of this nutrient. Example, if you are deficient of an, like an iron supplement, an iron. So the doctor will give you a prescription for that. And if it is among the world anti-doping um, code, do you remember the world doping code, the issue of doping? So the doctor has to write a TUE for you to be allowed to use that uh, uh, iron supplement. Some people believe that for convenient provision of energy and nutrients to achieve performance benefits. 
to gain a performance improvement indirectly for better recovery from training sessions, for financial gain or sponsorship, probably some company wants to sponsor their products or want to, to, to market their products. So they sponsor an athlete. So for peer pressure also, why is an athlete using a supplement for peer pressure? If we look at this research, it has been done by IOC. This was an IOC sponsor study back in 2004. That is quite a long time. But the study showed that 14.4% of 634 freely available substances contain anabolic agents that were not declared in the label. So an athlete might read the ingredients of that particular um, supplements and found that there's nothing that is against in the world anti-doping or the, the, the issue. The, I think you've read about the world anti-doping code. You've read about the ADAC, uh, that is uh, anti-doping agency of Kenya, their, their booklet, their education booklet. It gives you the do's, the, 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 uh, the, the drugs that are not uh, allowed in sports. So the risk of producing a positive doping test can be present for hours or two, two days if you use ingest a nutritional uh, supplement. Also, we've seen that anabolic um, agents, which are normally synthetic hormones, like uh, a derivative of testosterone, and are used medically, especially to promote tissue growth, which most athletes abuse it in terms because they need to increase the size and the strength of their muscles and improve the endurance. So if you look at the next table, this is an IOC. It was done back in 2002. Look at the countries of interest. Look at the Germany, US, was it US or Germany? Germany. Out of 129 uh, nutritional products that they were researched on, 15 of them had positive results, meaning that they contain um, products or, uh, yes, substances that are not allowed in sports. So what am I saying? I'm saying the World Rugby guidelines on dietary supplement says let's be use extreme caution regarding the use of supplements because there's no guarantee that it's free from prohibited substances. The biggest risk is cross-contamination or lacing substances that are free. A product also can also contain ingredients that are uh, that are not also listed, that we talked about. Look at the next slide. These are the listing of the supplements. If you look at this needle, somebody is trying to put a, an, a prohibited substance in one of the products, supplements that, the, that we are taking. So what does it tell us? They are spiking it with dangerous substances. So let's have a way of... Um, of taking our nutrients from natural foods. So if you look at my next uh, table, if you want to get more of iron, why don't I take my spinach? Why don't I take my organ meat? Why don't I take my liver? If I want to have vitamin C, vitamin D, fortified cereals, nowadays we have cereals which are fortified, like even the maize meals that we are using. They are fortified with different uh, ingredients or nutrients. So look at this also, the examples of uh, contamination found in nutritional supplements. Look at this, they're all prohibited substances, testosterone, all of those. So what are the nutrition challenges that a rugby player is having not to achieve their nutritional goals? Most important, we want to achieve the body composition goals for specific positions to play. Then the nutritional challenge is also is meeting that additional energy in terms of carbohydrates and protein demands. Probably they don't know how to 
to, to, to mix or, or how to go about it in meeting their demands. So the important thing is see a nutritionist for you to do your plan. You need to organize a practical and economic nutri nutrition plan while juggling work and study more, sometimes commitments, training commitments, probably you're in school at work. Also, you need to keep uh, to a nutrition program, especially when you are traveling as a team. Also, you need to make appropriate adjustments in a variety, in a very limited um, uh, off season and or when you are injured. So in conclusion, what will I say? The important thing is taking natural food. So what is the important thing for a rugby player when it comes to substances abuse, when it comes to prohibited, prohibited substances rather? The important thing is take natural foods. The important is have a designed and planned diet. The important is do your training, train hard, train with your coaches, follow your programs from your coaches. And in that, I would say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you, Master, for a very insightful uh, presentation. Yes. I've learned so much, and I hope the other guys have done the same. Uh, just two questions from our chat. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, uh, from Timothy Muwumba. Since afford affording sports drinks could be expensive for some, I've heard that ORS is a very good substitute. Is this so? If, 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 uh, please come back again. Uh, if if or, ORS is a very good su ORS, substitute yes. yeah, for sports drinks. Are um, they? I would, yes. I would say ORS. ORS is oral rehydration solution. Yeah. Oral rehydration solution mainly, we use them for uh, di diarrheal diseases. When somebody has abdominal upset and especially having loose tools more than, more than four to five times a day or a night. So ORS, it's a very, it will be a very new thing in sports using them to, to, for oral rehydration. I think the important thing for us is to use, um, to use uh, salt or sodium in our meals, especially if you have lost uh, you are a, a, a sweet sweater in terms of sweating a lot. So you need to take a lot of uh, food with salt, or even you can mix your water with a bit of a pinch of salt for you to meet that demand. But also don't overdo it because if you don't do it, well, there are also conditions that will come along with it. So the important thing is in moderation. And again, um, sports drink, we've talked of sports drink, if possible, that use those ones. So for, for ORS, I would be, not unless I'm corrected, I would say, let's, let's be precaution, let's take precaution on using that. Thank you. Uh, the other question from our current uh, acting CEO, but he left a bit earlier. How does the nutrition plan change for, say, diabetics? Yes. Diabetics, um, when you're a rugby player and you're diabetic, mainly they are concentrated sugars, like the simple carbohydrates, that you need to sit down with the nutrition so that it's, uh, she gives you a plan of what you are supposed to eat in terms of like simple carbohydrates. You need to avoid them completely. You need to avoid things like sports drink uh, because now of the concentration of sugar. And also you need also to plan so that we, there's something called uh, carbohydrate, uh, insulin carbohydrate uh, counting so that you know for me to play, how much calorie do I need? And for these calories, how much insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents am I using? We need now to balance. That's why now you sit down with your doctor, you sit down with your nutritionist so that they are able to plan for you your diet. Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Mercy. I hope they have received the answer. Uh, last question from Mugwe Wariara. Uh, maybe you can touch a bit on nutrition for a person transitioning from rugby life of intense training to normal society life. Assuming while in rugby one gains weight and using the BMI measurement, you may be overweight and now you want to be normal weight. What tips can you offer? Thank you so much for that question. It's a very valid question. When you're transitioning from uh, rugby to probably a normal, probably you have retired in rugby, the important thing now is to reduce your uh, carbohydrate intake. You need to reduce your food intake. When you're transitioning again, you don't, because you are used to a very intense exercise, you are, you are supposed also to continue exercising so that your body uh, reduces, it doesn't have a drastic change because also that drastic change can bring up other conditions. Uh, and again, you are, there's, a, there's a way as a rugby player, you are used to eating. So when you come to a less intense life, it means now you need to cut down on your, how you eat. So there's also that balance. There's the balance of what you are eating, because remember I said, the energy that you are taking should, consult, it should, it should, should be equivalent to energy that you are producing. So now, now that you are, you are not in, uh, doing intense training, it means now less of your energy. It means now less of your food that you are taking. Thank you. I hope I've answered you correctly. Yeah, uh, if if he needs to get an more on questions, it. yes, you can get you can catch up with me. Yeah, yes. Uh, from Motor Williams uh, to Mercy, wonderful presentation, Madam Mercy. A quick yeah, one. Thank you. Yes. During in season, what is the best fruits that teams can bank on pre-game and during the game, as far as glycemic index is concerned? Thank you. The, the during in session, the most yeah. important yeah. in session. In season. Oh, in, in season. Yeah. Yes, in season. In competition, the most important one is the ones which are easily digested. You don't need to take a, you can use watermelon, you can use bananas, you can use passions, you can use even a mango. A mango. Also, the most important one is an apple. Also, you can take an apple. So the most important fruits all basically most fruits because you need to take uh, you need to take meals that will not give your abdominal uh, upsets when you are competing and again as an a player as a rugby player you need to i said listen to your body so that for each athlete there's the do's and the don'ts for some will not take anything during competition or during in session but for others, they can eat as much as, as they can. So listen to your body so that if you know that I am this person, that it gives me an abdominal upset. If I take an apple, some people cannot tolerate apples. If I take an apple during competition, it will give me an uh, abdominal upset. You go for something like a banana. If a banana gives an abdominal upset, there are variety of fruits that we have. So I would say that listen to your body, and again, when you are training, please let's practice these things when you are training. And also when you go outside the country, when you are competing, don't try the new things during compete. When you are all competing and you are almost competing, eat things well that you are used to because most fruits are available and most vegetables also are available outside there. Thank you. Yeah, I hope Moto, you have gotten the answer. Uh, from Nika Bok, Good presentation, Mercy. And here is the question. Does having sexual activity improve or enhance recovery or game in terms of energy use? Having sexual? Activity. Having? Sexual activity. Does having, yeah, improve or enhance recovery or game in terms of energy use? Oh, my goodness. Uh, why am I saying, saying my goodness because after competition, <laughs> After competition, you are, I believe, I would say energy less. So sexual activity, it is natural. And again, 
I don't know how much energy I'm having at that particular time, but it is a natural thing. So it's God-given. You can have it for recovery. I would say no recovery. It's the food that you eat. Eating balanced meal, eating meals less, less than an hour, avoiding alcohol at that particular time is the best thing. But other things, they have to happen because they're natural. Thank you. Uh, to Nick Abok, just to add on, uh, it's the food you have. So having sexual activity is not a meal. Uh, last question from Sarah. Good presentation, Madam Masi. In terms of bicarbonate, that is, in terms of bicarbonate that is used for cooking greens, what do we substitute with? Yes. Since you said we cut it. Yes. What normally happens with bicarbonates? They um they change the color of the foods that we are eating. So the important thing is to make sure that um. The food is as natural as they can. Bicarbonate also does not contain any nutritional value. That's why I'm saying let's cut it on. It, 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 it interacts with the nutrients absorption. So the important thing is if it is kumawiki, if the spinach that you are having, wash your spinach, at most is, the, is, is, is oils. And, and, and probably you want to fry them, you can put your tomatoes and your onions or steam them so kindly let's avoid at all times using bicarbonate because of interaction with the nutrients absorption thank you yes madam Masi. there are no more questions uh anything you need thank to you. add um rugby team i believe right now you are off session yes Yes, because of the COVID-19, I know it's unfortunate, but I will um, urge our athletes to, to stay safe, follow the Ministry of Health regulations in terms of uh, avoiding so that we don't contact the disease. I'm, I'm hoping if rugby union fraternity that uh, no one will suffer. I believe that Nutrition is very important in all sports. And also you need to plan ahead when you want to do competition. See a nutritionist as often as you can for a high am here. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you very much for the presentation, Madam Masi, and spending your time with us. Thank you to the rugby fraternity. Thank you to KRU staff for organizing this wonderful uh, webinar, Zoom. Facebook Live, and uh, by Monday, we should have it uploaded on our YouTube channel. So I'm saying a good night to everyone. Keep safe, follow the guidelines, as Madam Masi said, and uh, we we'll meet again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.